I'd like to call the regular meeting of the Romulus Board of Education scheduled for November 12, 2007 to order. Could I have roll call, please? Ms. Kraut. Here. Ms. Roscoe. Here. Ms. Frere. Present. Ms. Buckley. Here. Ms. Lanassi. Present. Mr. McKevich. Here. Mr. Kudrick. Present. All right, now we have a little uh, change in the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, it will be led by the Romulus Elementary 5th and 6th grade students. Uh, when we're ready, uh, we have a portion that the board members are going to do, and then the meeting of meaning of the Pledge of Allegiance would be done by the students. Can we read just that. I think so. Board, board members. Stand? All right. Would everyone please stand? Are we supposed to say these? Do we read the whole thing at once or do we stop? Each? They're going to do the other so One at a time? Okay. okay. All right. We're going to start. Board members? I, I pledge. pledge. for approval of the agenda. Support. For approval of the agenda, we have a motion by Mrs. Lanassi, supported by Mrs. Freyer. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Now we have approval of minutes of the previous meeting and study session. Uh, so we would need two separate motions. Mr. President, I make a motion that we approve our minutes of the study session of October 22nd. Support. That's Celeste? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a motion by Mrs. Buckley, support by Ms. Roscoe, to accept the minutes from the study session of October 22nd, 2007. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Now we have the regular meeting. I'll make the motion that we approve the board meeting of October 22nd, 07. Support. Support of that. April. 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 We have a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes of October 22nd, 2007 by Ms. Lanassi, supported by Ms. Freyer. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Now we have a report of the superintendent. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, first and foremost this evening, we have the fifth and sixth graders <laughs> from Romulus Elementary School uh, for a Veterans Day presentation. So I'm going to turn the floor over to Romulus Elementary.
on. We have an essay by Chanel McKay about Veterans Day. Come on, Ms. Chanel. You can stand right there. Hello, my name is Chanel McKay. I am in the fifth grade at Ramis Elementary, and my teacher is Miss Barbara Knight. I have written an essay about Veterans Day. I hope you will enjoy it. America, we have so many religions and celebrations, like Hanukkah or Christmas. But one holiday we should be grateful for is Veterans Day. It's not just men walking around with guns. They're real people. When you go to school, you have separate subjects to study. But in the military, there are intense subjects to serve our country. The Army is one of them. The Army is a cluster of proud, proud people who are organized and trained for warfare. My cousin Andre Jones is in the Army fighting in Iraq right now. The Navy are, are protectors of the sea. Our nation's entire sea is safe now because of them. The Coast Guard guards the coast of our nation, carry out rescue operations of ships and troubles, and uphold custom laws. Our Marines are real people, men and women training for combat. Last but not least, Air Force. Air Force protects us by air in case a plane falls or even if they spot a suspicious aircraft. While some people have parties and barbecues on Veterans Day, other people are in cemeteries sobbing and crying because of the death of a much-loved veteran for who fought and died for America the Beautiful. Veterans Day was also known before as Armist Day because of the Armist, which ended World War I. It was signed on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. People thought there would be no more wars because of this armistice. But just a few years later, we were back in it in World War II. So Armistice Day is now named Veterans Day to honor American veterans of all wars. And not just the signing of the armistice from 1918 to 2007. We still honor our veterans on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. Thank you for listening and good night. Um, this morning at 9 o'clock, um, the person that was supposed to be here reading decided to get sick in class this morning. So <laughs> Chanel at 10 o'clock was informed that she was going to do her reading tonight. So Thank good you. job and excellent. excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Out of respect for all of our military, we have one slideshow and then we will end our presentation with it.
That does end our presentation. Any questions or comments? Mr. President, if you don't mind. Mr. Kudrick. I really like to see the fact that the young folks, and like Chanel said in her poem there, because I'm a veteran myself. And really at this time, we really need to think about a lot of our young men and women who are overseas right now and away from home. And at this time, we have a lot of Romulus residents and a lot of graduates from Romulus that are overseas, defending it for young folks like yourself or your families or us to have what we have. And we really need to say thank you to them folks when we see them. Very nice. Well, Mr. Cook, Mrs. McAnally, and Mrs. Knight, thank you very much. And, and the fifth and sixth graders from Romulus Elementary, we, we appreciate your hard work on this presentation. Very well done. And if you want to stay, you're welcome to stay. If you want to go home, you can go home. <laughs> Set in classes. Mr. Oh, West you Point did such a good job with those kids. Thank you. That was enjoyable. That's the first time. A lot of hard work. A long time. Well, there's, 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 Okay. Next. Oh, I guess it's, it's still. still you, um, personnel. Next, we have Mr. Clark with some personnel <clears throat> items. Thank you, Mr. Wise. Members of the board, I have several personnel recommendations for you this evening. Uh, our first one is a four-year information uh, employment of Ms. Wendy Diebel, elementary cafeteria server at Hell Creek Elementary. All right, hold on. order. Okay. the only one I had. It's a dental Okay. Right there. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Our second one also is a four year information. At the October 8, 2007 Board of Education meeting, the board voted to restore six Title I paraprofessional positions. As a result, we are reassigning six kindergarten aides to these positions Ms. Wendy Dubiak to uh, Rumius Elementary School, Ms. Viola Heil will be reassigned to Merriman Elementary School, Ms. Jennifer Madison reassigned to Hell Creek Elementary School, Ms. Tina Perkins-Smith reassigned to Wick Elementary School, Ms. Kathy Rice to Corey Elementary School, and Ms. Sherry Young reassigned to Barf Elementary School. And these reassignments will be effective November 15, 2007. Our next for your information, also, due to the restoring of uh, the six Title I paraprofessional positions, Ms. Cynthia Gingrich is being recalled as a kindergarten aide at Wick Elementary School, and Ms. Vicki Webb is being recalled as a kindergarten aide at Romulus Elementary School, also effective November 15th. Our next for your information. As a result of the restoring of the six Title I paraprofessional positions, Gabriel Miller is being hired as a kindergarten aide at Merriman Elementary School. Tisha Orman is being hired as a kindergarten aide at Romulus Elementary School. And Ms. Jennifer Robb is being hired as a kindergarten aide at Hell Creek Elementary School. And for our final recommendation, is also as a four-year information, it's a resignation of Ms. Elizabeth Ward. Uh, Ms. Ward is resigning from her elementary cafeteria server position at Romulus Elementary School, effective November 21st. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Uh, next, we have Ms. Papazoglu with uh, uh, bills for payment. Thank you, Mr. Weiss. I'm recommending the board approve the bills submitted for payment for the period October 24th through November 8th, 2007, in the amount of $941,988.14. Go ahead. Mr. President, I would like to make a recommendation to approve the bills for payment. Some support. <clears throat> we have a motion by Mrs. Freyer, supported by Mrs. Roscoe, to 
approve the bills for payment. Are there any board members with questions or concerns about this bills for payment? Mr. President, I got Mr. one Kudrick. question. Uh, Mrs. Papazigo, I really appreciate how you got this formatting of these check registers. Uh, it is a whole lot better than what it has been in the past. Um, compliments to the new finance system. We finally switched over to a, um, a new system. Really makes things a lot easier okay. to read and understand. Good. Yeah, Mr. Kuderick stole my thunder. I had put a note on you for the same thing. <laughs> I thought it much nicer and a lot easier to handle. <laughs> He'll pay for that long. Remember that two uh, years? I had a ruler. <laughs> that was nice. So we do have the motion. Any other questions or comments? If not, a roll call or a vote is in order. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. A second item is I'm recommending the board uh, declare surplus the uh, attached list of computer items. Um, they're no longer needed, uh, obsolete, very old equipment. Mr. President, I make a motion that we declare surplus equipment as the line in, in the memo in our possession. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Buckley, supported by Mrs. Roscoe, to um, list several computer items as obsolete. Uh, do we have any questions or concerns from board members? I just have one question, Mrs. Mr. Frayer. President. Sherry, are we putting those in the um, city auction? Not at this time. We have a company who's going to come. They recycle them, and they will um, provide a, a payment for it. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're doing our best to get the funds out of them and recycle them. Any other questions? If not, then we will take a vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Okay, next, um, I indicated uh, in your packet last week that we would give an update on where we were with uh, PCMI and also um, just to acknowledge that there seems to be uh, some misconceptions about PCMI. So I want to start off um, kind of backing up to um, where PCMI came into, um, into Romulus Community Schools as part of our spending reduction package for the 0708 school year. Um, we initially uh, contracted with PCMI uh, in three areas. Um, and PCMI, for those of you that aren't familiar with them, are uh, what's known in the educational world as a third-party contractor. Um, um, the school code provides that um, there are primarily two positions that have to be employees of the school district directly, and that is the superintendent. The school board cannot can contract out or subcontract the job of superintendent. That has to be an employee of the school. And all teaching positions, all instructional positions, or I shouldn't say instructional, all teaching positions are directly employees of the school board and the school district, all right? Any other positions in the district can be privatized, and you've heard about districts that have gone that route, um, or subcontracted. Um, it is not the intention of the school district um, or Romulus Community Schools um, to even look into privatization at this point in time. That's not something that the board is considering or that the administration is considering. And that is, and I want to be very clear, that is not something that we have entered into a contract with PCMI to do. PCMI is what's known as a third-party contractor. By, um, by hiring or uh, by using employees from PCMI, uh, what happens is it saves the school district a sizable amount of money. And part of my update will be kind of an up, um, to let you know how much we've saved so far with, with this arrangement. And we are contracting with PCMI primarily in three areas. Um, we're contracting with them for substitutes. Um, we're also, and that would be not only substitute teachers, but substitute custodians, all substitute employees. Um, we're also uh, contracting with them for coaching positions. And in addition, we have a sizable amount of our uh, budget that goes toward um, what we call non-athletic stipends, things like 
uh, class advisors, sponsors of the chess club, those types of um, activities, those are paid positions um, in our school district, our employees are compensated. And those, are, those people are now um, acting as employees of PCMI and are compensated through PCMI. Um, the way that the district saves money on that is by avoiding a very costly contribution to the retirement system when they're not our employees. And, um, and so, again, what I want to be very clear on is that's what PCMI is, uh, has contracts with dozens of school districts in this, across the state, and they do basically two things. They act as a third-party contractor, as I've explained here, and what they also do is they will um, contract with school districts um, for interim employees. For instance, um, we have a, uh, a situation where um, a couple of administrators are going to be going on maternity leave, not together, but um, but they are going to be on maternity leave. Those are key positions in our district. And um, what we're going to do is enter into an arrangement with PCMI for an interim replacement for those people while they're on maternity leave. Um, we will have someone else coming into the district um, to fulfill those job responsibilities. Uh, it's something um, that has happened before in Romulus. We used a, uh, an interim counselor last year, although that one did not go through PCMI. Um, and I've used PCMI employees when I was working in Dearborn Heights as deputy superintendent. It's a kind of a win-win situation. It's good for the school district. It kind of keeps things going on when employees from time to time need to take ex extended leaves of absence. And it's a very cost-effective way for the school district to deal with the situation. What PCMI does not do is they do not privatize. They're not set up for that. Um, and I know that there are some people around the district that are concerned that this is kind of a slippery slope that we start with a little bit here and it gets worse and worse and pretty soon we have PCMI employees that are doing all of the jobs of all the employees of the school district and I just want to be very clear that that's not our intention at all. Um, and that's not what PCMI is contracted for. They are on a one-year contract with the district subject to renewal uh, by the Board of Education. Uh, at the time that we contracted with PCMI, our projected savings was in the neighborhood of $65,000 a year. Um, that was what we anticipated saving by doing this, and we made the commitment that we would pump that money back into our program um, in the form of recalling laid off employees, adding positions that the board had cut, and that's exactly what we did. What I would like to do at this point um, is give the board um, a very brief financial update um, of how we benefited from our arrangement with PCMI. I have a little spreadsheet here and it doesn't have a lot of data in it because um, we've only been doing this for um, about two months. Um, but I'll just explain um, what we've done, um, what our costs are, and what our savings have been. And if I can just walk you through, if you start with the uh, left hand column, uh, uh, you can see that we've had four payrolls beginning on September 14th, and the last one that's reflected on this spreadsheet was October 26th. Now, the very next column is the total cost of those payrolls for PCMI employees. So, for example, on September 14th, um, the total cost to the district of the PCMI uh, compensation uh, of the PCMI employees was $5,985.19. If you look over to the next column, to the right, um, first row, we paid PCMI at the rate of, we pay them at the rate of 16% of their payroll, so they received from us a check for $957, all right. Um, if we would have paid uh, directly, if those were our employees and we would have paid retirement and FICA instead of paying the $957 in costs, we would have paid $1,519.64 in costs. So if you subtract uh, if you, or take the difference between those two columns, that's where you come up with the last column on the right, our savings. So on that payroll, our savings was $562.01, all right? Now that was a very small payroll. You can look at the, um, the next three payrolls. Um, they uh, range between a low of $28,000 and a high of $43,000. And to date now, um, based on that, um, those four payrolls, uh, the district has uh, netted a savings of $9,522.24. Um, 
we have in most of our PCMI expenses would occur during the school year, not during the summer, and we have approximately 21 pays that occur during the school year. So if you, if you kind of extrapolate those figures out, you see that we're pretty much on track toward saving between sixty-five dollars and $70,000 this school year um, just by that arrangement. So it's been very effective so far for the district. I realize that it's a, a new program, and I have to take my hat off to Ms. Pazoglou and Mr. Clark, who have really been the people that are doing the work with PCMI, and those are the people that have been fielding the phone calls when employees have questions or there's confusion about uh, various issues uh, related to um, the third party contracting. So they've been doing all the legwork on this and they've done a very admirable job. And again, the net result is that this is money that we don't have to take out of the general fund. This is money that goes right back into the program that affects the teaching and learning in the school district. Any questions? I have a question. Um, First of all, when we first started this PCMI, I was under the stipulation that we were only going to use it for our substitute teachers and our coaches in the athletic department. I don't think it was very clear that you were going to branch out and use it for substitutes such as, you know, in the busing or in the custodial staffs or in the kitchen aids or where, wherever we're using them. And I, I just don't think that was very clear, not only to myself, but I think there's other board members that, that was not clear to. And um, I don't think that um, when we voted to use PCMI that we were under the stipulation that was going to go any further than that. If, if I'm wrong, then, and then someone needs to step up and say so. But um, I, I really don't think it was clear to us that you were going to use it for everyone. Well, and um, I take responsibility for that lack of clarity. I went back and I looked at our spending reduction package. And it did say um, there were three categories that were listed on there. There were the substitute teachers, and it did say substitute teachers. There were the coaches, and then the third category was the non-athletic stipends. That was also on there, which would be like the class sponsors and, um, and those types of things. All right, those were the three that were listed. I do know, and I checked with, with Sherry and Ed just because I'm old and my memory isn't always that good. We did discuss all substitutes with the board, but unfortunately I never changed the language on the um, – on the actual um, spending reduction plan. And so uh, I take responsibility for that. It wasn't an intentional, um, uh, but it was always our intention to use, to use that for all substitute positions. Okay, I guess I'm what's less, I don't remember that. I remember, I remember teacher, I remember the three things that was listed. I don't remember all substitutes. I really don't. And no, I, don't remember I just don't. That either. So if, if that was the case, then uh, but I, I don't remember that. So maybe it's just wasn't clear to me or I guess to Celeste to any of too. Us. Well, well, but a few I, of that's, us anyways. that's the three that I thought. And so when I, when I heard that we were using it elsewhere, I was like, you know, I don't remember that. But I apologize. I and another concern I have is the fact of who are we then using for our substitutes um, for these other positions. Yeah. I mean, How because when, work? because when, How does that work? because, and I know um, you're probably not comfortable us discussing this, but I think it needs to be very clear that some of us weren't very clear on this as to exactly how we were going to be using PCMI. Well, I mean, I understood we were only going to use it for one year, and if it didn't work out, then so be it. But I was under the stipulation that we were using it for payroll, not to um, sort of say outsource and bring other people in to work positions that we have either laid off employees or so on and so forth that could come back in and fill those positions even if they're on a temporary basis. And let me be real clear about this because we're, and um, you two can kind of back me up if I, mis if I misspeak, um, we are not using PCMI as an attempt to outsource anything. In fact, we made two commitments to the board when we started with PCMI. One was that no one would suffer a loss in pay uh, over what they were paid Previously, in other words, if you worked, if you were, a, I'll just use an example, if you were a bus driver but you also worked as a substitute custodian, for instance, um, not this year you would be a substitute custodian uh, working for PCMI, you would not be paid any differently. And in fact, because you avoid the employee contribution, your paycheck is actually about 3.9% higher than it would have been last year. We have not made any kind of an effort to 
um, to use people other than our own employees. And um, Mr. Clark, if you could just um, kind of let the board know, are there, are there cases where we're using people who we haven't used previously and cases where we've deliberately not called our own employees? No. I know there have been some mistakes that were made where we've called the wrong people and that, that happened before PCMI and that will probably happen after PCMI too. Sometimes it's, you know, there's a quick situation, but um, can you? Yeah. What you will find is that the majority of the people that are working in the so-called part-time position are the same people that were working in those positions prior to PCMI. The only difference is instead of being instead of receiving a check from running the schools, you receive a check from PCMI. They go through our hiring process. Uh, they still come in through the front door to fill out the uh, application procedure. The other difference is instead of the application saying run this community schools, the application, uh, the application says PCMI. So everything is just like it was before. It's just that they're being paid by a different company. Uh, we still must adhere to the contract. Uh, the union is still involved with us. Believe me, if the union feels that we're bringing in someone uh, over another uh, union uh, person, be it Local 64, be it a teacher's union, uh, that union will get with us and we will resolve that matter. But uh, there's no attempt to use the PCMI employees over any of our union employees. That's, that was not the intent of this arrangement. Okay, now, you mentioned um, the office here in the board office, the business administrator. Um, you're bringing somebody in from this company in for that position? Well, um, yes, we will have someone on a part-time basis. I mentioned that in my weekly update about yeah. probably three weeks ago. Okay. Now, this is somebody that's done it here before? Uh, this is someone who uh, actually is a retired Director of Business and Finance from West Bloomfield Schools, mm -hmm. and she's uh, currently working part time for Livonia Community Schools. She's been doing; she's been retired, I think, about three years, and been doing kind of part time filling in for people, um, you know, in, in various school districts in Wayne and Oakland County, um, as part of her retirement. Now, I think we have to keep in mind we're still the supervisors; we're still the managers. Um, they follow our job description. This. PCMI is not dictating anything to us in terms of how these employees are to be used. These are our employees. And, you know, one of the things, in all fairness, you know, we, um, we were asked by the community, our employees, and our Board of Education to, um, to have a very lean central office administration. We did that, all right? Um, but that means when somebody's gone, there's some essential work that has to be done. And we can't, you know. We're not questioning right. that. Okay. We're not, we're not, and this, we're this is like, again, this is an organization. Sherry has worked with them before. I've worked with them before. They're very good at what they do. And I've experienced nothing but quality personnel um, in, every, in every instance. They basically, we go through an interview process, um, unless there's someone we know who we want and um and want to bring in based on reputation but they have um and they sent request them. right and that's what we did for the business person um okay. and uh but you know they will send us resumes and at any you know at any time if we're uncomfortable with how a person is performing you know we call them up and um and we make some changes i don't mr president if i may mm -hmm. uh, Personally, I don't have a problem with any of that. I just think it just this PCMI is really new to this district and this community, and people don't understand it. So I think it just took some clarification to to understand, and we might have to keep doing that until mm -hmm. people really get it. Mm -hmm. But it's just that we need to communicate so people understand, and that that's the whole point. I agree. There are a lot of misconceptions out there, and we kind of anticipated some, maybe not all, the misconceptions. Um, and I apologize for the lack of clarity in the spending reduction plan. I should have probably, um, you know, paid some more attention to that and added the additional details. Any other questions? Mr. President, I've got a question. Mr. You're saying, Mr. Weiss, that this PCMI contract is only good for one year and that in June of 2008 we will, as a board, vote on whether or not we want to keep going with this plan? Correct. Can I make a suggestion, if you don't mind, if this comes across our board. Can you be very detailed as to what positions will be covered so all board members are very well aware of what positions will be covered? 
I mean, write down if it's a lunchroom mother or a bus aide, whatever. Put them all on there so we all know in writing. And maybe that might solve a lot of. I'd be happy to do that. Again, uh, in all fairness, we were kind of learning as we were going. Um, this past year it was the first year for us doing this, and um, we had a pretty tall order in terms of the amount of money we needed to cut out of the budget. And so um, we tried to save wherever we could. And unfortunately, that led to a lack of clarity case and I, I if I can mr. president one more comment and I think for this to work in any any way fashion or form and go forward it, it all has to stay clear we, we need to work with the unions we need to make sure there's um, you know protocol is taken as far as who gets called when they get called and like you said there's always mistakes there's always things like that happen before PCMI it's gonna you know nobody's perfect but I do not want to see us uh, bring anybody else in that isn't already an employee of ours or who, who's on layoff. Um, I, I just don't want to see that happen. Any other questions or comments? I uh, just had a quick comment. There are other companies out there. There's one that's going through Wayne County Risa, uh, and I don't even know their name. I know it's not this one. But in talking with uh, people from Wayne Westland, uh, since I had worked there in the past, there are horror stories you can't believe over there. And uh, so, yeah, we need to be very diligent in what we look at. Uh, but, you know, this is kind of a new area for a lot of places, and it's got a lot of problems. The other thing is, uh, will we get like say another four or five months another update on the savings that's all I have yeah it's our intention to kind of keep you you know bring you up to speed periodically throughout the year um, Ken or mr. president I just yes. have one question PCMI I thought was more of a um, their payroll service right they're not like a temporary agency um, that's not exactly accurate they provide no, I'm asking I have yeah. no idea what they are um, initially um, Initially, they started working with uh, filling in administrative positions on a temporary basis. In other words, I'll, I'll just give you an example. We had a situation in Dearborn Heights where uh, one of our principals resigned. It was about the second week in August, so you know the school year is just around the corner. We didn't really have time to start a, an elaborate interview process, and you know, which would take us at least a month. We wanted someone there to start the school year, um, and so. Uh, our first call was to PCMI because we knew that they had, you know, a couple of dozen people who work as elementary principals who are, in most cases, retired elementary principals or curriculum directors, um, and they're looking for part-time work. And so, you know, we made an arrangement. They sent us some resumes. Um, we formed a committee to look at the resumes, and we said, hey, here's our first choice, here's our second choice, see if these people are available. Um, and that gave us time to kind of take our time on, on um, posting the position and hiring the right candidate for the job, you know, um, versus starting the school year with nobody home. That's, that's really how they got their start. Um, and, um, and then they've branched off into the substitute teaching is really probably their biggest business now, um, being the third party contractor for substitute teachers. But um, as districts have been forced to cut uh, money out of their budget, like us, um, they branch into other areas. Okay. Next, is that okay. next item under supervisor contracts? We had nothing in the pack that I know of. No, um, I had um, given the board uh, actually uh, several months ago. We talked about two positions: our uh, director of um, transportation, our supervisor of transportation, our director of maintenance and operations contracts, and. Um, Basically, what happened there was we had uh, two administrative positions that were, nobody really knew why, um, were part of a union. Um, those administrators came to the administration um, uh, probably the beginning of last summer and asked if they could decertify their union and become part of our central office administrative group, which um, I saw as a totally appropriate request. and so. We did the research. We had to go through a process with the Michigan Employment Relations Commission. Um, they had to vote, even though there's only two of them. They had to have formal elections and everything <laughs> else to decertify. 
their union and um, our commitment this is what I shared with the board was that this was not a way for them to get more money or less money um, it was basically a status quo we would give them what was in their contract and so um, the contracts um, for this um, are uh, basically what those people would have been making uh, had there been no changes plus one percent since um, all of our um, other groups collective bargaining groups received a one percent pay increase either for last year or this year these two individuals took a pay freeze for last year so keeping them on par with the other organizations um, uh, we're asking for a one percent increase in their contracts otherwise everything is pretty much the same that it was um, in their uh, union contracts and they were linked in with uh, our um, our network administrator our uh, uh, manager of uh, community and adult ed as far as central office administrator benefits uh, they get basically the same number of sick days and vacation days as the rest of the central office people and normally with those contracts uh, the board president signs off on those and, and he's seen both of them The, well, basically, we need a motion and support, and then we can have questions. Without seeing anything, we don't have any paperwork. Yeah, what, what are we voting on? You know, um, if I can make a suggestion, we could table this until after executive session. Sounds good to me. <laughs> All right, then we need a motion and support to table. I'll make a motion that we table. S supervisor contracts. I'll support it. Any comments or questions? Anything from the board? All right, then we'll have a vote. All those in favor of tabling the item, oops, that's item F on the uh, agenda, supervisor contracts. All those in favor of tabling, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes, the item is tabled. Now we come to item G in the uh, agenda, that's communications and expressions from the public. We have one um, request to speak from Jenny Sayer, uh, dealing with the Ramos article. If you would come up to that square and take the microphone. Give us your name and address. And, uh, Jenny Sayer, Jenny Sayer, one, six, <laughs> Jenny Sayer, one six two three zero Hannon Road in Romulus. Um, I'd like to bring to attention, if not already, about the front page news article in the Romulus Roman titled "Teacher Support Staff Called to Work." Uh, specifically, two quotes that I underlined. Uh, it says, as of now, all laid off teachers and paraprofessionals have been called back, end quote. The other quote, but two weeks ago, it was able to call all instructional staff back. I stood reading this in disbelief, a um, little disheartened, uh, disheartened that to me that is a simple uh, cross-reference to a checklist uh, from um, our Romulus um, you know, I, I, I'm an employee here. As of right now, I am still laid off. Um, and I, to me, I was wondering why wasn't my name standing out? Um, there were rumors about a month ago, teachers were coming up to me saying, I heard everyone's off the layoff list. And I'm like, I'm still on the layoff list, not a rumor. This article to the Romulus residents basically solidified that all laid off teachers had been called back. And I felt that it was very, um, a misrepresentation, I'm still here, I still have no benefits, I've gone with no insurance since the school year started. So I wanted to bring that to attention. Um, I still am employed with Romulus, I'm very thankful for that, I am teaching at the adult ed, I'm teaching six classes, a night class, so I am making money, but still, I'm, I'm still a laid off teacher with no contract. and. Um, I was very um, in disbelief when I read that it was on the front page of a local um, newspaper. And I only happened to run across it because my son was actually on the second page um, for the Boy Scout troops. Um, and that's it. Thank you. 
Um, I guess the other thing I would want to know is, uh, sorry, is that how could something as big as this be overlooked? You know, what were they cross-referencing? Because um, to me, that's a, that's a major thing to thank other teachers, but at the same time, overlook one person. Um, and I'm going to stop now. Um, if I could apologize on behalf of the board and, and, and the district, Jenny, um, I just want you to know that um, I, too, my heart sank when I read that article. Um, I, I found about six different inaccuracies in that article. Um, and I would say that um, even though it's regrettable, I would say that's kind of the norm for those articles. Um, I normally get called about once a month. and. Um, and normally there are uh, issues there too and unfortunately that's something that we have no control over just like we have no control when they print an article you know in the Detroit News or Free Press we do the best we can to be clear and give the facts and hope that they take good notes but we're kind of at their mercy and in, um, this was not the case in, in, for this article but we've called before and asked for corrections and um, it doesn't normally work that way. And I apologize. It was not anybody's intention. I just had one comment. Uh, I was shocked when I read the article as well. And I know they keep saying Betty Lanasi, And I know Betty a lot better than this. And there's one thing that stood out in my mind as I read it. Uh, Teachers helped us out by not taking off. We would have had to pay substitutes. You know, if that was the case, if we were to save money anywhere near what we needed, teachers taking a few days off wouldn't come close. And I know Betty wasn't saying it that, you know, and so it's, it's unfortunate. And for them to come out and say that everybody was called back is not accurate as well. Anyone else have any comments? <coughs> Superintendent, uh, items of interest. Yes, a um, couple of things. First and foremost, I want to thank uh, Mr. Tom Kuderick. Tom made the arrangements for, um, a, as part of our board member professional development, um, which we've been harping and harping about. Um, Tom made the arrangement to bring the professional development to Romulus on December 18th. Um, there is a, um, an MASB class that's going to be offered right here in the boardroom for our board members. And uh, several board members have already signed up. But um, I'm just going to read this to you because um, I follow my instructions. Don't miss your opportunity to develop the skills you need to oversee the education of students in your district. Research shows a connection between student achievement and board governance. And the public supports board, uh, board members receive, uh, yeah. receiving training and are more confident in their decision-making ability. Watch a short video on the importance of board training and how trained boards save money. Um, anyway, you are, um, you are all invited to participate um, in this. Um, uh, this is CBA 260, um, uh, one of, part of the ongoing professional development offered by the Michigan Association of School Boards, and it's going to be right here on December 18th from six, six, to, nine. six to nine. Six o'clock to and nine o'clock in the evening. And that's public speaking. Okay, and that's the focus area is public speaking. Thank you. Anything else you want to add, Mr. Clark? Nope. Thank you for arranging that. And I know a number of you have all, all oh, yeah. already signed up. If you do want to register, uh, contact Carol Bales and we'll get you signed up. Additional items um, you have in your packet. Um, uh, uh, reading first Hawk highlights, Miriam and calendar of events, uh, WIC newsletter. The Chartwell's newsletter, um, and um, up and coming, you will have. I know um, uh, Louise is working on the December calendar of events for all the buildings. So my guess is you'll probably receive that, if not this week's packet, next week's packet. Hopefully, that new process of giving you the monthly calendars is working out for you. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, it works well. Good. One of the many good things that came from our study sessions. Uh, yeah, that's all I have. Next item is questions and concerns of board members. Uh, I would like to just quickly uh, let the people know that tomorrow morning, uh, November 13th at 7.30 a.m. at the uh, 
High School Media Center. We're going to be honoring the uh, students from grades 9 through 12 for their academic achievement. It's a very nice ceremony, uh, and it will be roughly probably an hour or so. Anyone that can make it, they're welcome. If you have a son or daughter that's uh, on the list, I think uh, it would really be nice if you could make it to that program. Uh, it's at the Media Center tomorrow morning at 7.30 a.m. Thank you. Any board members? Ms. Freyer. Um, Mr. President, I would just like to say somewhere in my packet there was a letter from our athletic director, I believe, to one of our middle school coaches mm -hmm. about um, what Mr. a Panish. successful year. And he further went on to say in the letter um, about what he was able to teach the kids. And it was so much more than football that he was able to express to those kids. And those kids walk away this year with a winning season. They ended up being 6-0. and But more importantly, as Mr. Woodson, I believe, stated in his letter to um, Coach Patterson, was about how, how great of a job that he did with the kids. And I think we need a lot more of that from mm -hmm our administrators because it really is good to see that both you know especially on the positive side because you know sometimes all we get to hear about is the negative so when we see something positive like that I think it's great and I'm, I'm glad to see that Mr. Woodson took the time to acknowledge what Mr. Patterson was able to do with those That's youngsters kind of over at the middle school and if I could on that same note of Mr. Woodson um, they had their athletic banquet for the high school the other day, the other evening, and they did a really great job. There was lots of, uh, it was full. They were bringing in more chairs. And uh, I know Ellen Bragg did a lot, a lot of work for that too, and she did a great job. But they, they really, was nice, the culinary arts cooked. And uh, I just wanna say they're really kicking in with the l less help they have, they're still getting everything done that they need to get done. And I, I really appreciate that. And if I could chime in, we had four board members present at that event. It was very nice to see you there. I know that's, that's appreciated. Mrs. Buckley. Yes, Mr. President, I would like to visit that multi-age classroom in Merriman. Can we set that up some, sometime, please? And, and I would like to go with Cheryl on that group trip that we were supposed to take the last time that someone ran off and left us. <laughs> You're talking about the multi-age? No, multi age classroom. Okay. Um, I was actually there today. If you would. You know, we have a... Two of them went off and left us. If you, can, if you can do this, it would be terrific. We have uh, um, one of the reporters contacted me last week, Wednesday at, was it 10 o'clock? Wednesday at 1, but she hasn't really confirmed. That's just kind of tentative. Okay. But if you can make it, if you can kind of clear some time Wednesday, we can kind of firm it up tomorrow. Mm, I can't. You. That would be an opportune time to come. Really some nice things going on in that room. What? This week, Wednesday? Wednesday. Yeah, this Wednesday, this Wednesday at 1. Wednesday. If not, we can yeah. arrange another time. 1. Just, just they're, getting, they're getting used to having visitors. Just email, email. I'll the email you. She didn't Thank come you. in all day. Oh, okay. I just did a tentative, so she's supposed to call me tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> and if, if not, then we can call over and make arrangements with the principal. Okay. Any other? Any other Questions or comments from board members? Seeing none, the next item on the agenda would be executive session dealing with the superintendent's evaluation. Uh, to go into executive session, we will need a motion, support, and a roll call vote. Mr. President, I would like to make a motion that we go into executive session. Support. We have a motion by Ms. Freyer, support by Mr. Kudrick, to go into executive session. Now we'll take the roll call vote. Ms. Kraut? Yes. Ms. Roscoe? Yes. Ms. Freyer? Yep. Ms. Buckley? Yes. Ms. Lanassi? Yes. Mr. McKevich? Yes. Mr. Kudrick votes yes. All right. Uh, so on a 7 0 vote, we'll go to executive session. The time is 7 32. And is there going to be anything after the executive session? Uh, yes, yeah. we do. We will have one action, one action, one action item. Okay. Vote on that. Yeah. All righty. So if you want to hang around, you're more than welcome. And uh, we will adjourn to. Uh, I'll bring the stuff up here.
Okay, I'll make the motion that uh, we return from executive session at well, eight. We'll get it. Okay. Support. Uh, we have a motion from Ms. Lanasi, support from Ms. Freyer to reconvene into regular session. We're going to need a roll call vote. Ms. Kraut? Yes. Ms. Roscoe? Yes. Ms. Freyer? Yes. Ms. Buckley? Yes. Ms. Lanasi? Yes. Mr. Minkevich? Yes. Mr. Kudagoch? Yes. Motion passes. We're back into regular session at 817. 817. And now we go to, we need a motion to okay. bring item F uh, from the table. Okay, I'll, um, I'll make the motion that we remove item F from being tabled. Support. All those in favor, or any questions or comments first on that? All right, all those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Okay, Item F, go. supervisor contracts, is now removed from the table. Okay, now we've got to make a motion to approve the contract for the supervisors. All right. Mr. President, I would like to make a motion that we approve the supervisor contracts as provided to us here tonight. Support. All right, we have a motion from Mrs. Freyer, supported by Mrs. Buckley, to approve the supervisor contracts. Uh, any questions or comments from board members? Seeing none, we will have a vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Supervisor contracts are approved. And the last item that I see is adjournment. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion that we adjourn. Support. My fingers can't go anymore. We have a motion from Mr. Kuderick, supported by Ms. Lanasi, to adjourn the regular meeting of November 12, 2007, of the Vernon School Board. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Meeting is adjourned. Folks. <laughs>